I think it was opportunistic. I think it was in a moment of high rage. Information no one had except the person who must have put that knife inside of her. He had 45 bullets in his body. The intent was clearly to kill those officers and those first responders. The reason we've been so successful with the police is because we target on the prolific offenders. And it's a matter of building a mountain of evidence. He is a man who will never again walk the streets of this city or any community. Hello, I'm Dan Satterberg and welcome to the Prosecutor's Post. In this program, we take a closer look at the issues impacting criminal justice in our community. We also introduce you to some of the men and women who work for justice every day. Today, we have a special guest who has used his unique profile in our community to raise the awareness in the fight against domestic violence. We welcome the head basketball coach of the University of Washington men's team, Lorenzo Romar. Welcome, coach. Glad to be here. You know, domestic violence is a big issue for our community and for mm -hmm. certainly for the prosecutor's office. Uh, and I, I'm interested in some of the work that you uh, have done and are, are wanting to do with your new foundation, the Lorenzo Romar Foundation. How did you select the prevention of domestic violence as one of the topics that you wanted to work on? Well, with, with our foundation, it deals primarily with family, family issues and domestic violence and the prevention of that, I feel, is something that's uh, very relevant to the family because it goes on quite a bit. And uh, I've witnessed it firsthand. I think it's an ugly, ugly thing that happens uh, within the family. And it's something that it, it becomes a cycle. Once it's witnessed by the, by the young kids, then uh, sometimes they feel like that's the only way for them to handle their issues when they're older. And it just, it's handed down it, after generation after generation, and it really needs to stop. So domestic violence is learned behavior that children learn while watching adults. I think in some cases it is, but I also think it's uh, just for a lack of knowing how to deal with relationships. You know, men and women are different. Men and women think differently. And, you know, sometimes with, with man to man, you may even mention to another man, look, if you say another word, then I'm going to get you, you know, and the guy say, okay, enough, enough, all right, all right, enough. They understand each other, but mm -hmm. in a situation with male and female, she may say something else. And at that point, we have to understand, we have to be able to communicate. We have to be able to do our jobs as men so that m women aren't always in that position to provoke us to that point. When we get to that point, we've got to do a much better job of handling it. It's unacceptable. That's just not the way you handle conflict. And that's one of the things I'm most excited about with your involvement in this, because this has for so long been seen as a woman's issue. Domestic violence is a man's issue. We need to own this as men. You're surrounded by young men all the time who play for you or want to play for you. Uh, how can you, as a coach of a basketball team, kind of begin to, to teach these young men uh, that hitting a woman is never okay? Well, it's something that uh, we don't shy away from. Uh, we will casually at times talk about that, uh, sometimes maybe even a little more formally, that that's just not something that you do. You have to be more creative in a relationship uh, when, when con conflict is involved, and especially with athletes and, you know, the tough guy thing, mm -hmm. you know, comes into play where, you know, no one's going to talk to me like that. That's, it's not about how someone's talking to you. It, it's about communication. If you really love someone and you really care about someone, you get creative, you have a little bit more patience in, in holding back in situations where you just want to become physical with someone in that regard. Certainly the sports pages are filled with negative role models, how, how not to act as a high-profile athlete. Do you have occasion to use the sports page as a, as a teaching moment for your players? We do. We will bring articles to meetings and show, you know, some t at, unfortunately, uh, young men in handcuffs because they went a little too far in whatever they were doing. We try to show those examples, but uh, we also try to explain it's not just an athlete issue. This is a society issue, and this is just something that people do across the board, whether they're whether you're in the, uh, the limelight, the public's eye or not, and it's something that's universal that across the world we need to be able to do with, deal with a lot better than we have. Now, domestic violence is something that one can learn. We know that it's a cycle. We know that people don't like to talk about it when it happens in, in their house. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough road for us to climb, but uh, what, what are some of the positive signs that you've seen with the young people that you work with? 
you see that uh, maybe they become aware and they recognize with someone else that uh, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, it's on their mind, in the back of their mind. It, uh, they may not constantly talk about it, but if they were placed in that situation, maybe they'll think twice before they just do something like that. Maybe they take a walk and they just leave as opposed to just reacting on their emotions at that point. You know, it, uh, it's a cowardly act, you know. You're not, uh, sometimes guys want to project or portray a tough guy image because, you know, my woman not going to get away with that. Mm -hmm. that. You're a coward. You know, you're a complete coward to do that. And I think you're limited if you do that because you don't have any other means of dealing with this person that you care about other than to slap them around. It's just unacceptable. It's barbaric. It's it, caveman. It, it really behavior. is. It really is. So how do we get the message out that a that a, a, a real intelligent approach, a sensitive approach, uh, is, is a person who's willing to sit down and talk through their problems with a person with whom they're in an intimate relation? Somehow it just needs to be more out in the, in the open. We're talking about this right now. This needs to happen more frequently. The environment and neighborhood that I grew up in, it was going on, but it was something that you just accepted as normal. This is not good, but that's kind of how it is. That's what happens until, it wasn't until I was older that I was a little more educated and realized, no, that is not how it's supposed to happen. This is not normal. This is abnormal. This is terrible behavior and something should be done about it. But uh, I was in different situations uh, as I got older. A lot of times, you know it's wrong, but you think it's acceptable. And it's acceptable <coughs> in the sense that it happens within the closed doors of a family. And a lot of what happens in, in that family home is not to be shared outside the home. That's one of the culture uh, dynamics that we're faced with here. Definitely in our culture, what goes on in this family stays in this family. and. Uh, you know, I don't believe you have to necessarily broadcast it uh, to the entire neighborhood. Hey, guess what happened at our house? Right. But I do think we need to be aware to the point where we find a way to go get help. Uh, this is, I wouldn't call it an addiction, but it's a behavior that if it's the only way you know how to deal with it, it's hard to get away from it. Emotionally, uh, if it's an anger management issue, whatever it is, you can't help yourself at times and we need to be able to educate people and they need to be able to find out when these emotions arise how do I deal with them how do I prevent myself from doing these things uh, uh, educate men need to educate themselves about females a little more the way the guy on the corner the fellas in the corner talk about females is not what females are really about they are not an object to do with physically what you please whatever it is and uh, we need to take it upon ourselves as men to understand the, the females a lot better. Amen to that. <laughs> uh, and it starts with the kids, I think, to change any sort of culture that's been with us for many, many years. So you have a positive uh, relationship with so many young men, and I, I really appreciate the fact that you're willing to, to include this in the curriculum. We're gonna, we'll talk about team defense, we'll talk about fast breaks, right. <clears throat> let's talk about relationships as well. You know, there comes a point where you won't play team defense. You know, you get to be 30, 35 years old, I don't care how good you are, you're not going to play a whole lot of defense and make baskets for money anymore. It's just not going to happen. But you are going to have relationships until you leave this earth. And it's much more important to me, those lessons and what we learn, than being able to make a basket or winning basketball games. Thank you very much. Coach Lorenzo Romar of the men's uh, basketball team at the University of Washington. That's all we have for today. If you'd like to find out more about your prosecuting attorney's office and the other programs that we're working on, please visit the website below. I'm Dan Satterberg. Thanks for joining us.